Hello and welcome back. This will be tutorial 4 of the VU22339 unit, which is uh, using computer-aided design systems. The workbook is asking us to draw a drill stand, and once again this will be a project you'll be making in the workshop using hand tools and power tools, and of course some, some uh, machinery like the milling machine and drill press. They're asking that you draw a the item and a bill of material, so this will be two pages and also a engineering drawing. Looking at this, you can see it's an assembly. So this will be one file, be drawn in a top-down st structure, and it will contain four parts, being the base plate, top plate, and two screws, countersunk screws. So let's jump straight into this and get stuck into it, okay? Now here's my demo model that I've demonstrated earlier to get au fait with this project before coming and showing you guys. And it's very, very easy to do. I'm going to be moving quite quick on this one because you've already had some experience with prior tutorials. So um, at any stage I start to lose you, please remember to stop, uh, rewind and play again. The first thing we need to do is to ensure that you have your data panel open where you're saving all your engineering work and you've got a, a proper outline folder and every, all your work is in there so your instructor can see it when requested. The first thing we do is open a new design and we're going to save this design straight away and this is going to be called drill stand always good to to use your initials or name or something like that as well now because this is an assembly file we need to save two components straight away off the bat now we can do that by clicking assembly new component but the quicker way is to right click on the parent level and go new component now remember i told you these are two components so this will be the base plate Right, and you can see in my tree now a new component is created. We're going to create another one straight away. We're going to right click on the top, new component. Okay, and this one's going to be called top plate. Now, if you've done it correctly, you'll see there's two uh, child files. So this is our tree, our parent file, and these are children of the parent, base plate and top plate. We're going to be starting on the base plate, so you'll need to activate the base plate by clicking that dot there. Okay, watch again. I currently had that one activated. Base plate and click the dot. We're working on the child, not the parent and not the other one. Create a sketch. Now I'm going to be moving fast, so get ready. Clicking on the base plate. The base plane, R for rectangle. Drag out. This is going to be 50. Tab 140. Tab enter. Uh, pan over, bring it over here, create arc, three point arc, click that point there, click that point there, drag out, find the middle, you'll see it chain, and click there. D for dimension, this is going to be a radius of 36.25. We're going to convert this line here to construction line, so we click that line, use the X key on your keyboard and it will go to construction line and you can validate that by having a look here in the sketch palette that that is a construction line. Finish sketch. E for extrude. Click our model 10 millimeters in an upward direction and away we go. Fit to our model. New sketch. Click the top face. We're going to be drawing two circles. Shortcut key is C. C for circle. I roughly found the middle and I'm coming up from that circle there. First thing we want to do is to make these two circles in line with one another. So we're going to use the horizontal vertical option, clicking the point, clicking the point. You'll see a constraint is now applied. And if I move these, they'll both move together. See that? Okay, D for dimension. We're clicking that edge and that there coming up. And this will be 15 millimeters. From that edge to that point and up, this will be 140. 140. Now we need to put a dimension on this circle, and this will be 4.2 because it's going to be a tapped hole. We need to make these two circles equal one another. Click equals, click that circle, click that circle. Both circles are now equal. Okay, and we can validate that by if I double click on it and type in 10, both circles will change. Go back to my 4.2. Okay, and they're done there. All right, now notice here that they're not locked down. See how they can still move? D for dimension, that and that edge. 
that'll be 25. Okay, you'll notice the sketch has now turned black, which means it's fully defined. Finish sketch, E for extrusion. We're going to extrude both these holes below the work plane, which will be a cut, and distance will be all. Okay, we need to thread that now. Create, create a thread. Click that hole, hold your control key down or your command key on a Mac. Click both holes. You want to pick M5, so the pitch for an M5 hole will be 0.8, so that's why the holes are 4.2. We click save. Righto, we have now finished the base plate. We need to jump into our top plate. So here I am here, and I'm going to activate it by clicking on the little dot there. If I've done it correctly, you'll notice that my base plate will now, the opacity will fade out. And it looks like it's disappeared, but it's still there. And you can see my top plate is selected, and I know I'm in the correct one. Make sure you do that before proceeding. Create a sketch. Click the top face of what you've just drawn. See this plate here? Just click it, okay? And it's found it. We're going to do a project include. So create, project include, project. Click on that face. Immediate click finish sketch. Come to our home view. E for extrude. Click that top face. Correction. Type in six millimeters. We need to put some countersinks on these top holes now. So it's going to be modify, chamfer. We're going to click that line and that line. It will be 2.5. Our chamfer is now done, that's our countersunk hole. Come up to a parent level and activate it at a parent level. You'll notice now that these plates aren't joined, okay? So I'm gonna undo, undo. What I need to do is to create an as-built joint. So assembly, as-built joint. I'm gonna click the top plate and bottom plate and animate it to show you that they're now locked together. Click OK. You'll notice now I can move them away. Control Z to undo what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put a joint to the origin, so assembly joint. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's a rigid joint. I'm going to orientate around to the base, touch the base, and you'll notice that it will start to coin. I'm going to pick that point there. Come back to my home view, turn on my origin in the tree, and see that point on my origin right there. I'll just zoom up here, pan up for you and zoom in. There's my origin. I'll turn it off again. I want to click it to the origin there. Okay, and now I'll fit it, and you'll see now that it's locked down. I'll turn the origin off. I can't move it, and it's locked down, and that's what we want. Click Save. Once again, you notice I did those operations in the parent level. We now to create the holes on the top of our model. If you have a look here, I need to put these holes on here. But before we do that, let's put an appearance on. So A for appearance. I'm going to type in red uh, anodizing. Uh, I'm going to make my red anodizing there. And then I'm going to type in steel. And I like this brush stainless steel for the top effect. All right, escape. So now I've got my appearance. I need to tell Fusion that <clears throat> the bottom plate, this one here, is aluminium. All right, so we right click on it. We're going to come up to physical material, click on that. And from this list, we're going to scroll down and pick metal, aluminium, and drag that onto the tree and click close. What we're going to do now, we're going to insert our screws, okay? Now, the screws, I will provide a link in the description area of this video, and it'll be a URL link, and you'll be able to download this screw. I'll open it here to show you. It's a, it's a screw from McMaster car. Your link will be in the description, sorry. And you can just download that and re-upload that by clicking the blue upload into your Fusion 360 folder. All right, now to get the screw into your design, you right click on it and go insert into current design. All right. And there's my screw there. And I'm just gonna move it to the side and click OK. We're gonna put a joint on that screw. Watch how I do it. I touch the top face of the screw, hold the control key or the command key, and I want the center point. So see where I'm going? I want that center point there. Come back out, touch the, my top of my model, hold the control key again, or command key on a Mac, and you can see it coining around. I want to coin the center there. Now it's upside down, that, that's okay. We use the flip button over here, where I'm, see where my mouse is, flip, 
we can flip that around, click OK. OK, let's insert the second screw. Right click, insert into current design. Close the data panel. Drag it out of the way so you can see it. Click joint. Go to the top face. Hold your control key down, find the center. Touch the top face of the model, zoom in. You want to see it coining around here. You want to coin it back there. Way we go. If it's upside down, click the other way. Flip. Okay, done and dusted. Click save. Notice I'm still in the parent file. The parent file is activated. Okay, we need to start putting the holes in the top now, on the top here. So we're going to click create a sketch, click the top face, L for line. We're just going to draw two construction lines running, not diagonally, make sure they're running horizontally across the page at zero degrees. And make sure you snap it to the edge. See that here? Don't go underneath it, don't go past it, go right to the edge and snap it. Let's run another parallel line and snap it. Now, you'll notice here that I've got constraints, automatic constraints have come on from Fusion to say that they're parallel. See that two little funny straight lines there? Okay, now I can move that line up and down, but that's all it will do. This one here is locked in. See, notice it's perpendicular constraint. So we're good to go. D for dimension. This line from here will be 12.5. D for dimension, that line will be 37.5. Righto. Remember how to turn these lines into construction lines. So click the line, use the X key on the keyboard. Click that line, X key. If you don't know how to do that, you can click the line and click this little button here in the sketch palette, all right? But the X key is much faster. Okay, we need to put six points along this line and six points along this line. Create, come down here to point, and watch what I'm going to do here. One, two, three. Don't snap it where the triangle shows you or you won't move it. So if a triangle appears, don't snap it there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do the same on the bottom line. You can see you can line them up roughly if you want to, to make it faster. Okay. You'll notice now that I've got six points on the top line, six points on the bottom line. We need to make a we need to place a constraint on those points, a horizontal vertical constraint. So we click the button, we click the top dot first, the second dot second. Notice the constraints are applied. Repeat that procedure. Okay, D for dimension. This will be 20. This dot here will be 40. Sixty. Eighty. Hundred. And 120 will be the last one. Alrighty, we've got all our dots in place and I'm happy with that. Finish sketch, come to our home view. We're now going to put some holes in. We're going to use the hole feature for that. So create, create a hole. Now, I'm going to show you once and then I'll probably fast forward the video. So hole type will be simple. Hole type will also be simple. So notice the first one selected and we want drill point showing, okay? and click OK. The first one I'm going to do though, before I do anything, I'm going to select that point. OK, so one, two, three. The first hole will be three millimeters. OK, and it will be to a depth of 13.5. Now each hole as you go up will drop half a millimeter in depth. So that the next hole will be 13. And we click OK. All right, to give you an idea, have a look here. I'll turn on my, this is my test job, and I'll show you what I mean. So all those holes would end up with the bottom of the drill bit will be in line, okay? OK, 
Okay, now notice their sketch has disappeared. Come down in our tree now, find the sketch, expand it, turn the sketch on. See that? This, all those points will reappear. So don't panic if you lose them. Okay, just repeat what I showed you for the next one. And I probably won't talk during this and I'll fast forward a little bit. Okay, now the metric side holes are done, we need to do the imperial side holes. Remember, you've got to have the sketch turned on or you won't find your points. So these holes will be 3.18, 4.76, 6.35, 7.94, 9.53 and 12.7. Okay, our holes are finished. Don't forget to click save. And we can turn that sketch off now. Remember, I was in the tree. I came down to sketches. I expanded it. And that's the sketch I had turned on. And I can turn that off. You can see that my holes work. Because if I turn off the top plate, you can see the drill bit where it's gone into the bottom plate. So we know that's going to work. Okay, we're now ready to perform the 2D drawing operation. We're going to be doing our 2D drawing now, and you may have remembered in the tutorial that I told you to extrude the top plate 10 millimeter. That was a mistake, and you may have heard me correct it in the video. I'm going to correct mine to show you now before I go into the 2D. It's very easy to do. Um, I'm going to activate the top plate by clicking the dot. I'm going to find the extrusion in the timeline, right click, go edit feature, and change that from 10 to 6 and press enter. Okay, go back to my parent file, activate it, and it's fixed. Okay, so what we need to do now is to create a engineering drawing. Right click on the top, create a drawing. This is the same process that I've taught you in the other four tutorials. Click OK. First thing we're going to do, we're going to bring in a home view. Here, I'm going to make sure that it's shaded, and I'm going to make it 2 to 1. And... OK it, and I'm just going to move that over a little bit. I'm going to bring in a bill of materials now, and that's quite easy to do. So a table, and drop it in the top right-hand corner there and snap it to that grid. And you'll notice now that it's already put in uh, everything I need, but you need to write in your description here. Remembering your description, you'll need to show that um, it will be aluminium. 10 by 50 by 150 and I'll place this up now for you so you can see you guys type that in here and also fill in your title block to reflect what I'm showing you now don't forget to put in the third angle projection symbol and the note that all dimensions in millimeters unless otherwise stated okay we need to do page two now we click down the bottom here uh, I'll just undo what I just did my mouse comes down to the bottom where the timeline was in the design window click quick add and we've got the second sheet create base view you're going to bring in the front view first okay and it's going to be one to one it's going to be show hidden detail so we're going to click here first remember this will be a3 click ok now we're going to do a projected view create projected view click once come up click out to the side and then the 45 one up the top here, the isometric. Once that's done, double click on the isometric view, change that to shaded and change the scale. Remember I was talking yesterday about in the previous tutorial was that the isometric view should be half scale. 
okay and we'll have to do it here in this item here okay you'll need to place some center marks as well so geometry center mark you want center marks on all your holes You'll need to put center lines in this front drawing here. When you do so, make sure you click the outside edge. So zoom in so you can see it. In the tree on the left hand side, turn off the eye to both Phillip head screws. Okay, place all your dimensions now, fill in your title block and ensure that it reflects what I'm showing on my screen now. Don't forget to save your work. You will have to show proof of your drawing to your instructor. And don't forget to name all views. So top view, uh, front view, right side view, fill in your title block, third angle projection and everything else and all the dimensions like I'm showing you now. If there's a problem with your dimension, there's a problem, okay? And you'll have to go back and fix it. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, we are completed. Uh, just remember to check your plans, your workshop plans. Make sure you've got all your dimensions in there that you're supposed to have. And you will actually go into the workshop and you'll make this. And making this forms part of the units, uh, the MEM units, which are power tools and hand tools, okay? And drawing it meets the CAD unit as well. Good on you. See you on the next